prepare our hearts, Lord, for the seed of your word. It makes you worry about the other to be deep rooted in our hearts and in our lives, Lord. It makes you worry about the other to be well. Amar Draure, Amar Dundra, Amar Ile. Dem in Zor Nevin, Lord, and feed us, Lord, because we are hungry. We are thirsty, dear one. Only you can satisfy our souls. So, Holy Spirit, I surrender to you. You be the speaker tonight. In Jesus' name, I sabah Amen. 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 I don't know what about Michelle meeting Jesus. Meeting Jesus. Can everyone say meeting Jesus? Meeting Jesus. Meeting Jesus. That's what I want to talk about tonight. Meeting Jesus. Because in Scripture, when people really met Christ, when people really met Jesus, they were never the same again. That's right. Whoever came in contact with Christ and had an encounter with Him, a real encounter with Jesus, that encounter rubbed off on their life and their life was changed. Amen. So put Manusa Jesus and say, Oh, I know Jesus. I have a relationship with Christ. I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. Well, that's an oxymoron because Scripture teaches different. People that know Christ, people that have a relationship with Christ, people that encounter Christ, that impacts their life and their life changes. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Now tonight I want to talk about a specific man, one person who met Christ. And Kakoj is when he met Jesus, he was never the same again. Zacchaeus. Very famous story. Probably most of you know it by heart, but, but there's so much spiritual truth to the story that we can apply to our lives. The story is found in Luke chapter 19. Verses 1 and 2, and I'm going to read from there. I think someone told me. Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector in the region, and he had become very rich. Oh, Cristo was on his way to Jerusalem. He was on his way to give his life. This was the last days of Christ. He was on his way to Jerusalem to give his life. But on his way to Jerusalem, and where he goes to this town of Jericho, he meets this man named Zacchaeus. Now, Jericho says, it was a well-to-do city, and the people that lived in Jericho were very wealthy. And the Bible says he was a chief tax collector. Not just a tax collector, but he was a chief tax collector. Right. In order to be a chief tax collector, you had to be somebody important. And in order to get that job to be a chief tax collector, you'd also probably have to be very mean. You had to be a very grazza manus to earn this right. position. Because tax collectors were very mean people. Janas Kamanus and the Maranas de Gajin, I Panavenas de Gajin, they would do whatever they had to do to receive the taxes from the people. So now, Kakokajo, he's a chief tax collector. That means there's a bunch of people under him. So he's probably the meanest of mean, Kakokajo. Now, tax collectors <coughs> were hated by the Jews. Because in order to become a tax collector, you would be a Jew. And. What they felt is that you turn your back on your own people. You became a tax collector for the Roman citizens, and now you, you turn your back on your own people, and now you're working for the enemy. I saw says, why were they hated so much? Because a tax collector had the full authority of Rome to do whatever they wanted to the Jewish people to lend the taxes. They would go to the extreme to lend the And that meant a penem, imprisonment, a maranle. So these people were hated. They were feared. And Kakomanus was one of those. But I want you to know something tonight. Regardless of what people think of you, and regardless of where you are right now, and regardless of what you've done, Jesus still loves you very much. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Because even though Kako tax collector, Kako chief tax collector that was hated by everyone, Jesus still loved him. Jesus still had compassion for him. And Jesus made an effort to meet this man so that he could fall in love with Christ. Luke chapter 19, verse 3, Motokare. He tried to get a look at Jesus, but he was too short to see over the crowd. Wherever Jesus went, there always was a large crowd. So Kaisazo Cristo and Akalazana Foro, Chidepele Gaje, Chidepele Manus around him. 
And it was a large crowd that was following Jesus or got close to Jesus. He wanted to see Jesus, so he tried to get to them. He tried to get to Christ, but he couldn't because the crowd was so large. He couldn't see Jesus because of the crowd. And the Bible says he was short, so to the Hossas, we know that he was a small little guy, so he couldn't see all the people. So my question tonight is this. He couldn't see Jesus because of the crowd. Let me ask you a question tonight. Don't answer it. Answer it to yourself. Who or what is keeping you from seeing Jesus? Amen. What is keeping you from Christ? What is keeping you from getting to Christ? Is there people in your life that's keeping you from Christ? Is there crowds that you're hanging around with keeping you from Christ? Is there people in a chutrao that's keeping you from Christ? Is it a khuli maybe in a chutrao that's keeping you from Christ? Is it a bad habit that's keeping you from Christ? Is it a so-called friend or friends that are keeping you from Christ? It is a tradition or zakono that's keeping you from Christ tonight? Listen to me tonight. No matter what's keeping you from Christ, you need to put it aside and get to Jesus no matter what. Amen. 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 Because if people are keeping you from Christ, let me tell you, you need to cut those people out of your life. Amen. If you got a sin in your life that's keeping you from Christ, you need to cut it out of your life. If you got a zakono, a humano zakono that's keeping you from Christ, you need to cut it out of your life. Can everyone say amen to that? Amen. amen. Because nothing is worth keeping us from Jesus Christ. Amen. Does everyone believe that tonight? Amen. 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 Now most of us, if this was us, he came, uh, this big crowd, and we tried to see most of us, I'm talking about myself, I probably would have get discouraged and turn around and go home. I would have said, well, you know what? I went, I made the attempt. I heard he was in town. There was too many people around. So you know what? I ain't dealing with this. I'm going home. That would have been most of us. Most of us would have probably just turned back and go home. But I want you to see what this man did. Verse 4, we'll talk about that. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree beside the road. For Jesus was going to pass that way. Go on, he climbed the tree. I know what I'm going to do. Did he come here to these stores? I can't get to them because of the crowd. So I'm going to take the next step. I'm going to climb the tree. The Kafka Christo is coming this way. So I'm going to get on top of the tree. And this is the way I can get a look at Christ. That's right. Now, Kafka Gajou was a big shot. Barbalo Gajou, a big shot. On a photo. Very wealthy. Now, Lajav says for Barvalo, Gajo, a big shot like him, to run, and especially to climb a tree. Lajaviski jealous us. It was silly what he was doing. It was crazy. This man, Kaisu Barvalo, Kaisu, uh, well known. Even though he's hated, he's highly respected, he's climbing a tree to see Jesus. This is a no no. This is a ridiculous thing. Now what I'm trying to tell you tonight is this. When you want to see Jesus, when you really want to get to Christ, you got to put away your pride. You got Sorry. to put down your pride in order to get to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Because sometimes while I'm out of pride, because of who we are, we don't submit to Christ. We don't take that extra step of faith to get to Jesus. We, we, oh, pride on the amende keeps us from Jesus. Am I talking to anybody tonight in this place? Yeah. And, and these things need to get out of our life. And you see, Gakko Zacchaeus, what he did, he put away his pride and he put aside everything and he put aside his stature and he put aside who he was to get to Jesus. Yeah. And he went as far as climbing a tree. And you know what I see here? He's, I see someone who has great faith. Someone who has extreme faith. You see, extreme faith makes you go the extra step to get to Jesus. Amen. 
Amen. Extreme faith says, no matter what, I'm getting to Christ. Amen. No matter what I'm going through, no matter what I'm facing, no matter what's going on around me, no matter what people say, I'm still going to get to Jesus, Amen. no matter what. Amen. And church, that's what we need. We need extreme faith Amen. to get to Christ and not allow nothing to keep us from Him. Amen. You see, let me tell you what extreme faith does. Extreme faith always gets rewarded. Jesus always rewards extreme faith. Faith that goes that extra step, that extra mile. That's the faith that Jesus rewards. Because look what happens. Verse 5. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, come quick down. I must be a guest in your home. Zacchaeus was just planning just to see Jesus, just to get a glimpse of Jesus. He went to the extreme just to toposke akapo Christo. But little did he know what was about to happen. Oh, Christo didn't just come to make himself known to Zacchaeus, but he said, Zacchaeus, come down. I am coming to your house. I am coming to stay with you as a guest in your house. Do you see how faith is rewarded tonight, church? Does everyone see that? Amen. Amen. You see, Buran Amendi, sometimes we think that our efforts are meaningless. I'm being faithful to God, but I'm not seeing nothing happen. I'm praying, and I don't see a breakthrough. I'm being obedient to the Word of God, and I ain't seeing nothing change in my life. But listen to me. Maybe it might seem like nothing is happening, but remember something. There's a big God in heaven that sees Amen. everything. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And if you stay faithful, and if you stay obedient, and you continue to pray, and continue to believe, and step out in faith, maybe not when you want, but more important, when He wants, He will reward you. Amen. Faith. He will reward your effort. Thank you, Jesus. But what is the message tonight? Don't give up. Don't give up. Hold on to God. Penaliska, I am coming to your house. I am coming to your house. And one of the reasons why Abilo Cristo Leste is because this man humbled himself. You know what the Word of God teaches us? That God rejects the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. He gives grace to the humble. The reason why this man this day received the grace of God is because he humbled himself and it caught the attention of Christ. Listen to me tonight. Humility always draws Jesus to your life. Always. And then he said, I must come to your house. Let me just share this with you tonight. When you have extreme faith and you humble yourself under God, God will bless you for it. But not only does he bless you, he also blesses your house too. Amen. He blesses Amen. your family. Amen. Because that night, Jesus didn't just meet Zacchaeus, he met his whole family. <coughs> we need to make the extreme faith, not only just for ourselves, but for our children and for our households also. Amen. Amen. Verse 6 says this, Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy. Listen to me tonight. That moment when he met Jesus, he was excited and he was filled with joy. I know Jesus. I have a relationship with Christ. I know him in a personal way, but they're miserable. They're miserable. There's no joy in their life. That's an oxymoron. Because the moment you meet Jesus, and if you really have a relationship with Christ, He takes away your sadness, He takes away your misery, He takes away your sorrow, and He gives you peace and joy in your life. Amen. Amen. Everyone say amen to that. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus fills our life with joy. Thank you, Lord. And then verse 7 says this, But the people were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner. They grumbled. He went to go stay with a notorious sinner in his home. You know what? Thank you, Jesus, because you come to sinners. 
Amen. Thank you, Jesus, because you come to Amen. sinners' homes. Amen. Because thank if you. he didn't come Amen. to a sinner's home, I wouldn't be saved today. That's right. That's right. So I thank the Lord because he comes to sinners. Amen. 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 He comes to sinners. That's right. Budmanus want to get their life straight. They want to fix their life before they invite Jesus to their house. Listen to me. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. You invite Jesus to the house right now the way you are. And he comes and he cleanses you. And he washes you. Amen. And he makes right. you clean. Oh, and yeah. he makes you righteous. Amen. And he makes you holy. Amen. You can do it. He's got to do it. Amen. That's right. And then verse 8 says this. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood up before the Lord and said, I will give half of my wealth to the poor. Lord, and if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. I will be a little peacefulistic. And then, Lord, I will give half of my wealth away to the poor. I to throw them back, I'll pay them back four times as much. Now let me ask you a question tonight. Did Jesus tell him to do these things? No. Come on, talk to no. me tonight, church. No. Nope. Did Jesus tell him to do no. these things? Did no. Jesus require him to take go, Cristo? Listen, Zacchaeus, uh, you need to give half your wealth away to the poor and pay back the, the four times then I'm going to come to your house. Did he say that? No. Come on, talk to me tonight. Did he say that? No. no. Jesus came to his house just the way he was. The result of Jesus coming to Come his on. house. The result Come of on. Jesus in his house changed his life. Amen. Yeah. Right. That's right. It's not he repented to get Jesus in his house. It's not that he repented to, to receive God's grace. No, you receive God's grace and God's grace gives you the ability to repent from your sins. Amen. That's what happened here. This is grace. And when somebody receives God's grace, that grace changes your life. Amen. Right. Repentance is a result of meeting Jesus. You don't change your life to meet Jesus. You change your life because you met Jesus. Amen. 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 That's right. This man was very rich. This man had everything the world offered. But yet his life was empty. He had an empty life. As soon as some of the things that I have problem with, you can have all the wealth of the world. So I felt to solve our problems more than you Michael. But if you ain't got Jesus, you ain't got nothing. Amen. Right. Amen. And that's why when Jesus came to his house, his life was full, and he was willing to give it all up. He was willing to give up all of his worldly possessions to receive Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for that. This is grace. Look what Ephesians chapter two, verses eight to ten says. Choir, please. God saved you by His grace when you believe. And you can't take credit for it. It is a gift of God. Amen. Amen. Salvation is not a reward for the good things you have done. So no one can boast about it. For we are God's masterpieces. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. So we can do good things He planned for us long ago. We can boast in our salvation. We can say, I'm saved because I'm a good person. I'm saved because I done right. I'm saved because I give money to the poor. I'm saved because I go to church. I'm saved because of who I am. No, The only reason why any of us are saved, the only reason any of us are forgiven, the only reason any of us are adopted into the family of God is because of God's Amen. grace. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All because of His grace. Thank you, Lord. But when you receive that grace, when you are accepted by God and you meet Jesus and He bestows His grace upon you, you're never the same again. Amen. Your life is changed. Amen. Am I saying, well, what are you saying, Jimmy? We're going to be perfect? No, you'll never be perfect. There's only one perfect. His name is Jesus. But there will be evidence that Jesus is the Lord of your life when you receive his grace and his mercy in your life. And then verse 9 and 10 says this. 
Jesus responded, salvation has come to this home today. For this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save those who are lost. Amen. Amen. This is why Christ came. This was the purpose of Christ coming to earth. Can everyone say amen to that tonight? Amen. Put manus gindin. Jesus came to make me wealthy. Jesus came to heal my sickness. Jesus came to make me happy. Jesus came to give me a better life now. No, Jesus came to save us from hell and give yeah. us eternal life. That's Thank why you, he Lord. came. Amen. And to forgive us of our sins so yeah. that we don't go to hell, so that we can have everlasting life. But because he's a giving God, he blesses us. He clothes us. He puts food on our table. He watches over our kids. He heals our sickness and our disease. He gives us peace, joy, and happiness that the world cannot offer. And he meets every need in our life. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Because he's a good God. Amen. Amen. Zacchaeus that day, his life changed. His life was transformed that day when he met Christ. And maybe today you're here, tonight you're here. And maybe you've met Christ. Maybe you've been in a good relationship with Christ. But maybe, maybe recently. Maybe something's going on in your life. Maybe had doesn't a true law add that maybe Duriland Katarodil and you're not in good fellowship the way you once were. I want you to know something. Tonight you can restore that fellowship with God. Amen. You can restore that fellowship with God. And God's joy, peace, happiness can be restored in your life and in your family's life tonight. So tonight, if you want to restore that joy tonight, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet with me right now. And we're gonna pray. And that communion. So that we can celebrate together the Lord's Supper. And when we come to the Lord's table, when we are celebrating and remembering what Jesus did for us on the cross, how he gave his life, how his blood was shed so that we could be saved and so that we can have everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And this is supposed to bring joy to our life. Nishanaz. Come on, I Christ, I'm ending. And I call it the Mesca, I made some holiday, I made some chisto. And we have eternal life, and we are children of God. That's why we come to the Lord's table, to celebrate, to partake. Father, search every heart that I have in this place, yes. including my own. If I'm distant from you, Lord, if I'm grown cold, Devla, restore me tonight, Lord Jesus. Bring me back to you, Devla, so that I can have that intimacy, that face-to-face -face encounter with you, Lord. I don't want to live for myself. I want to live for you. Amen. I don't want to please my flesh anymore. I want to please you. This world has not given me anything good. Only good things come from you, Lord. So restore the joy of my salvation. Yes, Lord. I cannot love. We come to celebrate, to remember what you have done for us. So prepare each of our hearts, Lord. It doesn't mean Buji, so do can amenga. Sandan Chirotra. Devil Amendra Jibulu. Swin so sala that come home. Cachamo. I want to get a little bit of 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 a little